Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna learn how to strike the ball perfectly. So we've recruited in one of the best coaches there is in the world. We've got Alex Riggs all the way in Dubai. Yes, yeah, excited to be here. Yeah, so we're actually doing it in, um, we're at Trump International and it is night golf, effectively. Night golf, range golf, whatever you want to call it, but it's the best kind of golf that you can ever play. If you've never done it, I would actually put it on your bucket list. It's so much cooler here, isn't it? Oh, the weather's perfect right now. Yeah, this is really nice. Um, this is our range for the evening and yeah, I'm going to leave it to you to show us how to strike that ball perfectly because we do do a few duffs every now and again. Hey, we all have an <laughs> opportunity to get better. And also one thing I am going to ask you as well is one of the things I'm really bad at is when the ground isn't flat. So on Uneven the range, rise. yes, I'm really good and off the range. I've been known to hit a few bad shots. Okay, we can definitely talk about that as well. Okay, so what does it actually mean to strike the ball perfectly? So if we're talking irons. Our objective is to be able to have the golf club traveling on its arc, striking the ball before hitting the ground. That's the differentiator between like a good ball strike and what a lot of the high handicaps struggle with is they're going to have swings where their golf club can hit before the ball by a couple of inches or maybe not at all. And it's that battle between getting the correct brush and the correct strike into the golf ball that's going to separate yourself from a, a poor ball striker and a good one. And what is probably the main thing. So you know sometimes you can randomly hit a really good ball and you're like, wow, how did it do that? Yeah. And then two minutes later you're hitting a like one that's behind the ball. What is the main reason for that differential? Well, you think of how small a golf club head is, right? It, the surface area isn't that large. Mm -hmm. So we all, even as young golfers, we'll, we'll kind of get lucky and find that sweet spot, hit that ball just perfectly, and we have that aha moment like, I've got it. <laughs> this is easy. In the next swing, they find the hosel or they find the toe of the golf club where they hit the bottom and they get back to reality again. And it's, <laughs> you know, this, this is that, that quest to figure out, okay, how do I repeat this good strike? So what I like to do with, with new golfers and even average golfers is just improve the proficiency of where the brush happens. Okay. So if I throw this alignment stick down right here, and if you step in with one foot on either end of the stick, Okay, shove forward so that you're closer to this one. If we said that an extension of that alignment stick would be where the golf ball is. Okay, yeah. so we said that's where the ball is. For you to know that you're oh, ready. Oh, so the ball is in front of this alignment stick. Or is, so basically now I've just took my club and I've gone straight. Yep, perfect. So we, we'd say, like if you're hitting a pitching wedge or a nine iron, the ball position's probably gonna be relatively centered in your stance anyways. So we've, we have an imaginary golf ball right there that you'd be hitting. For you to make a swing that would produce a good strike, you can't hit the ground before that spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's gonna be a heavy shot, right? We, we have to hit the ground a couple inches after that line. Yeah. Okay, and if we can improve our ability to brush the ground on this side of the line, we're ready for the golf ball. Like we've, we've proven to ourselves that we can now bring the ball in and have a good strike. Yeah, so I would usually put my ball like right in the middle Perfect. here. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Not that's slightly. You know, you can place, I'll tell you what, like ball position, as we kind of get more into the depths of it, ball position is something that you can always change depending on the height that you want to hit your shot. Now, if I'm giving a lesson to a, a brand new golfer, we would probably wouldn't get into that because that's going to be a little bit more into the depths Technical. of technique, right? Yeah. We just keep things simple and say, let's just put the ball in the middle of the stance and get good at hitting the golf ball before we hit the ground. So if you go back and have the feet kind of equidistant either side of the stick, We've got the club in the middle. We basically create a triangle. Now your task should be to make swings on a repeat where your brush never occurs before where that club head is right now. So the brush should always be somewhere over here. So if you make a, a So golf should swing, I have a T here then? And then we you, can- You could, but you'll be able to see it really easily with that alignment stick. Okay. Yeah. No Mia, that's not good drill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see the evidence as to where the divot is. <laughs> as if I'm actually hitting a shot. Okay, try that again. <laughs> try that again. That was a nice sweep, but let's see if we can get a little bit of evidence. Okay, perfect example. That was behind perfect that one. Perfect example. <laughs> so we, we know right away. Yeah, okay. I really tried to hit the ground there. Well, and th this is a very common thing, is that as soon as a golfer, when they're not used to having that divot occur in the right spot, when they try to hit the ground, that's when they hit those fat shots. Case in point, right? Example A. <laughs> So what, what we want to learn is like what, what's the necessary movement to making sure that this divot, which this divot is actually a really good divot. Like the size of it, the shape of it, it's a rectangular shape, the depth is good. We just need to move it a couple inches that way. And then we've got a good swing. We've got a swing that's going to actually work with a golf ball. 
okay? So what I'd have you do is go back into that same setup, okay? We can see that that divot is before where your club head is now. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit more pressure into your left foot. So favor your left foot at setup. Yeah, there we go, lefty righty, okay? <laughs> so we're favoring that left side. Now I want you to make a movement, a, a similar golf swing to the last one, but mm -hmm. just focus on keeping more pressure into that left foot throughout. So in my backswing, I still feel in this Just pressure. more than normal. Just feel like okay. you, you favor that left foot a little bit more than you normally would. Really good. That's now, hard to see, isn't it? Well, we can see this. That first divot ended right here. Yeah. Okay, so it began there, it ended right there. That second divot started right about there, ended there. Okay, so that second divot is already, that's trending in the right direction, right? Like if you were to continue making golf swings, I'd want you to continue extending that divot further this way. Okay, so let's let's get that train of divots working more towards the target now. Keep the feet in the Feel same spot. really bad making all this mud. Oh in no, it grows grass. back twice as nice. <laughs> really good. I really tried to feel like I had a bit more weight on my left side. Exactly. And the average golfer that's struggling with those divots occurring too soon is struggling with too much of that pressure on their backside. Is that like a, just a tendency, just fall yeah. back or? I, I think a lot of it comes from the intuition of trying to get the golf ball airborne. Mm. You know, you, you see players and effortlessly like hitting it that way. Throw, you go a bit back as well, don't you? Rather than yeah. throwing down is, I guess, more weight on your left. Correct, correct. So we're, we're obviously trying to get this golf ball into the air, but we don't get the ball into the air by lifting it into the air. When we do that, we're either gonna hit the ground before or we're gonna miss the ground altogether and hit it off the bottom of the blade. So what we're trying to learn with the average golfer is what it feels like to be able to strike down on the golf ball, which as I'm demonstrating, it requires us to be in that lead side. And that's what, if you were to then challenge yourself to keep extending this divot further and further in this direction, like there's gonna be a limit to how far you'd mm -hmm. be able to go. But to do that, you have to get comfortable moving into that left side. It's the only way to do it. So for someone who, say, doesn't have the privilege of a grass range, like in England, we don't, yeah. what would be a good way to kind of visualize this? A golf towel. So I have a ton of students that work all the time in indoor environments where they don't have the luxury of divots and grass. You can still use alignment sticks for a visual and then just take a normal golf towel, face towel, whatever, and lay it right about there, okay, a couple inches before where the ball would be. And if you can make swings where you don't hit the towel, you're moving that low point or that divot forward. So that's a good tip. Golf towel, a couple of inches back there, and then, yeah, because otherwise you'll catch it, wouldn't you? And it'll like, catch brush it. it forward. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's that's a really easy way of working on ball striking, because when you work off of mats, mats can, they can help us a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can catch it a couple inches before and still get a decent result. So using something like a towel is a really good way to ensure you have enough of that that downward strike. Yeah, I feel like it's also hard sometimes to see on a mat, like your ball could look good, but I don't know, you could be hitting that way or that way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that that's a huge one, making sure that the divot is always after the ball. Okay, is there anything else to strike the ball? Brilliant, well, that's that's number one. Oh, that's number one to striking the ball path. I thought I was done, I thought I was on tour. <laughs> that's the biggest one, that's the biggest one. <laughs> we get some, big ones that fly over here. Yeah, they're massive. We're on a military flight path, so we get oh, like the Hercules it? and everything flying over. I saw a really like, it looked like a submarine in the air earlier. Probably the Hercules. They can get oh. like four or five tanks in those things. Sheesh. It's crazy. All right, step number two. Okay, so we just solved low point. Now we're gonna talk about impact point. So impact point is where we strike the golf ball on the face. What low point's gonna help us with is making sure that we hit the ball before we hit the ground. Impact point is, do we hit it off the toe, off the heel, or hopefully in the sweet spot. So if you look at where you would, if I just get a new line for you here, put your club in between those two alignment sticks. So alignment sticks are actually a really good purchase. They're like super cheap, but they help so much, don't they, for little drills? Absolutely. This one's going to seem really obvious. Where your club head starts, for you to have a good strike, it must return through this same window. Now, this is not a reality for most new golfers. They, they might start with the club perfectly framing the golf ball, but at delivery, after we add in the complication of a backswing and a downswing <laughs> and all kinds of things change, that club could come through and they could come through too much on this side, hitting it on the toe, 
too much on that side and hitting it off the hosel. So just being able to deliver the golf club back through the lane that it started is essential. Because again, we might look like we have a really nice aesthetic golf swing, but if we can't put the sweet spot on the ball, it's tough to get a good result. Yeah. How we learn that is you, you start, like this gate is a little bit narrow to start with. It was looking quite intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I'd start two club heads wide. If you go one club head, that's even a little bit wider than two club heads wide. Yeah. If you start at that width, it'll probably still feel like a little bit of pressure to do it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so let's, let's start. But All let's right. start with just a half swing. So half the task swing. would be, we're gonna make a half swing and try to brush where you started with the club. Weight's still gonna go a bit yeah, more we'll on my left side. Yeah, we'll keep that same side. principle. Oh. Okay, great, great. Okay. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> you slightly touched this stick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's think. Okay, <clears throat> if you touched that stick, that meant that your club delivered a little bit more that way yeah. than where it started. Okay. So if you were to have mishit that ball, you would have mishit it towards the heel. God. <laughs> you know sometimes you're like, all oh, that ball in the air feels good. Now you know when it's not perfect. You might be too young for this game, but do you ever play the game Operation? Yeah. Where you have to grab yeah. the, the bones and you, you, know, you get zapped? That's what this is. That, yeah, it's that's what I feel operation. like. I felt really naughty for hitting it. <laughs> it's like, come on, Mia. Perfect. Good. Okay. Oof. So I'll increase the challenge a little oh. bit. And then you can imagine having a golf ball there as well. It might not look nerve wracking to you guys, but honestly, if you do this, you'll feel that nerves. I don't know why, it's because you don't want to hit them, do yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. It's like a little challenge, a little game. Good, good. So that divot's occurring in the right spot. Now, what this is going to help you with, it will definitely help you find the middle of the face a lot better, but it's also going to clean up your practice session with your divots. Mm. You know, a lot of golfers, when they're practicing, they basically create divots all over their station. <laughs> this keeps them organized. <laughs> so you get those nice little stripes. Yeah, and also, so I just hit a couple over there and when I was doing it, and you actually mentioned this earlier, but it's easy to think your divots are going in one direction when they're not based mm -hmm. on previous divots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it gives a nice, like this is a very simple setup station, but visually it does help us with where's our target? Because you can still, you can use this for body alignment as well. Alignment sticks can make a lot of people's practice a lot more productive. Mm, I want to hit some balls. <laughs> I want to just see if I can do it. All right, let's do another little one, shall I? Yeah. That weight forward feels oh, really odd yeah. to me. That was really good. Was it? It feels yeah. really odd. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but just different, I guess. Not you you got it. into the left side perfectly, and the left side basically became a wall through contact, which is what we're looking for. What does that mean? That means, so if you, if you spun around and faced that, what that means is that as you make your downswing, you create this wall right up through that left side. So your ankle, knee, and hip are in a perfect line. And if we, if we get into that position with that left leg, it's very easy for us to be able to then just turn through with the upper body. And then the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> he makes it sound so easy. It's easy, yeah. <laughs> very Perfect. good, very good. <laughs> awesome. Oh God. That's actually quite stressful. <laughs> <laughs> is that it then? Or is there more I tips you, to swinging perfectly? If, if you can you, nail those two. If you spend your time working on things that help you with where the club brushes, and then this path that the club brushes through, you're going to improve your quality of strike and your centeredness of strike. So with those, anybody can hit high, far shots. Okay, then it becomes, can we, can we manage more of the minutia mm. of, of the club face to hitting the ball even straighter? But I spend most of my lessons working on stuff like this. Really? It's, it's identifying movements in the body or the golf club that relate to this stuff. It's all down to impact. So say you don't have the most aesthetic swing in the world, but focused on doing these two tips, would you somehow end up getting into the right positions or like, do you need to be working on those other stuff as well? Take, you take a Jim Furyk, you take an Adam Scott, you take a Scotty Scheffler, and we couldn't have like more different looking movements, right? Mm -hmm. Yet, if we watch just the golf club from hip high to hip high, it's going to be so similar. So really what matters most is yes, okay, we need to make sure that we can deliver this golf club square, we can strike the golf ball well. We don't all have to look the same to do that. Mm. 
So golf shouldn't be based about like creating perfect aesthetics. It's about function. So maybe doing loads of short little swings is a good way to practice this oh, yeah. and then build up. If, if you can get better in a simpler swing, like a shorter swing, get better with your striking. By getting better with your striking, you're gonna get better with your directional control. And then right away, you'll start finding that you can probably play with that shorter swing anyways. <laughs> getting more length, you can hit mm. it further, but you, you wanna be able to plot your way around the golf course controlled. You, you yeah. don't wanna be looking for your golf ball in those bushes and those bushes. Yeah. No, I find that quite a lot of amateur golfers definitely say they're like, they, try, they, they want to have more flexibility and be able to get into this position, but really, I guess we should be focusing on just this part before that part. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it is being <coughs> able to understand, does that part make it impossible to get to this part? Mm. Like some of the times in lessons, a player might sabotage their opportunity to get into a good impact position by something that they're doing in their backswing. That does happen. You see golfers that might rapidly roll the club inside. It's not like that prevents them from getting into a decent impact, but it makes their job a lot harder. Mm. So like, I'm all about trying to find ways to make people's lives easier. And a lot of it is like relating to this stuff and then finding ways to simplify the backswing such that this becomes more achievable. Okay, can I try hitting a ball? Let's do it. Okay, Yeah. let's go find some balls. So you want to try the, yes. the gate drill? I would love to. I feel nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it nerve-wracking? Nine iron to an open driving range. Li literally, I shouldn't feel nervous at all. <laughs> yeah. Really good. That didn't feel perfect though. So this is this is really good. You accomplished almost all of what you needed. Yeah. You hit the ball first. You had a square club face. You didn't middle the strike though. No. So our feel as a golfer is mostly related to the vibration that we feel yeah. and the sound that we hear. If I put earphones on and took away audio, your feel goes down, okay? So every strike creates a unique vibration that we feel in our hands. That vibration is gonna tell you whether you hit it in the middle or maybe on the toe or on the heel. Now, do you know where you hit that on the face? Would you have a guess? Uh, to be honest, I think when I get a bit toey is when my club obviously yep. moves a bit more. Yep. So it feels, can feel like it's like really twisting. Yes, yes. That's what happens in toe hits. So the toe yeah. hit, that collision between the toe of the golf club and the ball opens the face up. I think I got really bit and I just squashed a whole mosquito on my leg. Unfortunately, this time of night, <laughs> they come out with a vengeance. I'm gonna have to spray myself. <laughs> I feel like these are scaring me. If they were here. They can, here, they can. Yeah, like I, I'd probably give you a little bit more of a buffer <laughs> yeah, there's no space for error. Yeah. Ten out of ten. Yeah, that was nice. So that had everything. That I just had... needed a little bit more space here. <laughs> <laughs> Decrease that pressure. Yeah, I think it was. It was just so close that I was like, oh my God, is my club face even going to get through this line? So what I'd do then is I would practice with a narrow gate mm. and then widen it just a hair when you go to hit golf balls. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Right? Because it's it's easier for us to go through that movement in terms of our, our mental. It's easier without the golf ball, so make it harder with the gate. And then as soon as you bring the ball in, widen the gate. Easy. Okay, that felt good. I want to hit another one. Yeah, <laughs> that one was true sweet spot. Yeah, that's nice. Does getting into the left side feel like a foreign movement to you? Yeah, a lot. Very foreign, actually. So that movement's gonna help a lot with your lag. Like, you know, you've said so you've you struggled think, yeah. a little bit with lag. Getting more comfortable being in the left side is gonna make that a lot more possible. Okay, maybe that is it then. You know when you do something for the first time, you always hit lots of bad shots and then people are so, you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go back to my old swing. But I actually need to hit through those bad shots and then it makes it better. Yeah, anytime you do something different in golf, I think what golfers fail to realize is that attempting to strike a golf ball immediately after changing a movement is often too difficult of a task. So like I'll have people work on where their divots are, are their divots going through the right window as we've talked about yeah. here. And as soon as they, if they fall off with their strike with the golf ball, I'll go right back to working on divots again. Just yeah. because they need to get good at that skill yeah. before they go to the golf ball. 
See, that looks nice, but I know that also wasn't perfect. That one was slightly low on the face, meaning a little bit below. It was centered, but yeah. it was below the perfect spot on the club face. Mm. And do you know why? Because I went like that more than like this. You didn't create as much divot. Mm. And just by, it's not a huge amount, but that's enough to change where you hit it on the face. That, but that's a shot like on the golf course you're gonna be happy with yeah, yeah, 10 exactly. times out of 10. So what is the reason why I did that then? Movement wise, that's always the tricky part. It's being able to identify the specific move. It could be, it could be you didn't quite get enough pressure into the left foot. So if I really feel like, I don't know what to think or feel to really get that downwards it's, hit. It's. It's important for you to feel like you can get into the left foot. Okay. okay. If you just kind of experiment between pressure on either side, you need to feel that you get into the left foot to create that divot after the golf ball. So I definitely felt then I tried to push down. And there's a lot more down in that strike. But you could hear the sound yeah. of that one as well. Yeah. So that, that would be a guarantee that you had more shaft lean. Okay. Yeah, the ball Guarantee, flight seemed right. like a bit lower as well. Yeah, exactly. So is that everything that people need to know about? For those two, for sure. Okay, impact point and then being able to travel through the right gate to get the centeredness of contact. Yeah, so I think if you guys are looking to strike the ball perfectly, try these drills at home, try them on the range, try them wherever you are, and just get really good at basically doing that. This is something I need to do. This is something that probably a lot of people need to do, even at the top of their game, just to make sure that they're constantly hitting the ball well. Ball striking is everything, and a lot of the times we can be working on some of those skills away from the golf ball. So you don't have to hit thousands of golf balls. We can work on this stuff just with sticks. You can buy those little mats as well, can't you? Yeah. Which you can see. Like, I know exactly those ones, yeah. Yeah, that you saw like all a over sequence the that, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Anyway, Alex, thank you so much for helping us My today. Pleasure. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give Alex a follow. We'll put his uh, Instagram handle. Do you have a YouTube channel? Not really. <laughs> okay, we won't put that up. We'll just put his Insta handle up. He does loads of really good tips on there. Also, like super quick, super simple. And you're also on Skillist as well. So if you yes. want a little lesson, you can get in touch with him. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And we will catch up with you very, very soon. Bye. See you.